Hey, Panda Perry here. So today I'm going to show you how to set up uh, basic transport controls for your Complete Control Mark II keyboard, the S series, and Fruity Loop Studio. Now, normally you're not. It basically it doesn't come with transport controls out of the box. Um, and by the way, a pipe. Blah, blah, blah. I apologize if my voice is kind of messed up. My microphone is not working too well right now. But anyways. Normally you can't get the transport controls right out of the box. You kind of have to like rig it so that you can get them to work. I'm going to go over some of the features that I have figured out already and there's tons more that can be added. So um, let's get started. First off, uh, the playlist. The most basic transport controls that you can have is to you know play and pause your track. Um, that's achieved here. Uh, we remap a MIDI event to trigger the spacebar on the computer uh, keyboard, which allows us to do that. So I'll show you how to do all of this here in a second. I'm just going to go through these. So record, trigger the record button, uh, open up the piano roll, which to the right of the piano roll button I have a quantize button, so if I had stuff in there it would quantize. I also have an undo button to the right of that, which would undo whatever I did if I messed mess something up and close the piano roll right there open and close the mixer same with the playlist and I can also jump to the next uh, empty pattern if you see that yeah so tons of control there and that's just the first page of my controls here the second page actually allows me to navigate in the playlist and because I actually have these mini controls open, I can't navigate through my keyboard. Here we go. So now I can go to my next page and I can move around in the playlist um, on a per bar basis. And then I can add time markers as well. Remove them with the same button, which is really handy. I can select marker regions to the next or previous marker region. I deselect, and I can also jump to the next or previous marker region. So, here's how we set this up. First, you're going to need to get Bohm's MIDI Translator Classic. I believe it's completely free. It kind of has this like weird little startup where it makes you wait a little bit of time and says, hey, you should purchase this. But as far as I know, it's free. So, yeah, there's that. First, what you need to understand that, is that a lot of this, these functions um, we're using keyboard shortcuts for. Not so much the playlist navigation ones, but uh, the previous page of controls, which is like the play, stop, uh, the record button, piano roll open, like opening stuff, undo, quantizing, that kind of stuff. It's all keyboard shortcuts. And the only way that we can really do that is by intercepting the MIDI event from the keyboard and then triggering a keyboard event. And that's what Bohm's MIDI Translator Classic does. It's super simple. Just hit this plus, when you open it, just hit this plus bar or plus button, name your template holder or your whatever it is <laughs> to be technical. Um, hit this plus button over here, which will add stuff to this like list essentially. I, had, I said it's FL Studio to complete Control Mark II. So, um, Here's all my buttons, play, stop, record, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so now, before we do anything with that, we're gonna open up complete control, make sure our computer or our keyboard is hooked up to it, and make sure that this is the standalone application, because if you don't, if you open it as a VST or something, you're not gonna have the MIDI controls up here. So open up these MIDI controls, and you're gonna click on whatever template you wanna use. Uh, you can create a new one if you want. I just have my default one. Click on the buttons tab, and you're gonna you can add as many pages. Well, sorry, not as many as pages. You can add up to four pages, and these are controlled on the keyboard using the little arrow keys. I apologize, I don't have a camera to record this with, but I'll show you. Um, and if you have multiple templates, when you're in the MIDI mode on your uh, keyboard, you can actually cycle through your templates using the preset buttons on the keyboard, which is nice. So. You can have a ton of buttons set up. Anyways, you're going to 
rename these buttons by double clicking on the titles down here and then it set them to like low really low register keys because we need to use higher up register keys like up here to navigate through the playlist and that's kind of like baked into FL Studio I don't think we can change that so you really need to make sure that there aren't any conflicts with page two so first off page one you can set it to whatever note you want but the important thing to know is that you do want to change it to a note put it on channel 16 because I don't know if I told you this, but you will need in your MIDI settings to set your song marker jump to MIDI channel 16. Sorry about that, it's a little disorganized, but that's important because we want to send these notes over on MIDI channel 16 or else it's going to try to play an actual note on the keyboard. Um, and yeah, we don't want that to happen. We want to control, um, basically control the Sorry, the playlist, and then we want to control different buttons and stuff. So we don't want to hear those notes coming out of the keyboard. So set it to channel 16, select a note, set the mode to gate, because you don't want it to toggle. Toggle is a pain in the ass. You have to hit the button twice to get it to do whatever you want to do. And then set the value to 127. So the play stop keyboard shortcut is actually space. So in Boom, what I did is I came in here, I named my new... Uh, translator entry. I select the incoming tab, capture the MIDI, and I go to my keyboard where I set up that play stop button and named it. I hit that button and it's going to show some options here. I'm just going to select the one at the top, uh, go to my outgoing tab, and then uh, make sure key press or sequence is selected and make sure keystroke emulation. I guess that's not, you're not going to see that. You're going to have to actually select keystroke emulation key press or sequence if it's not selected. Then just in here, um, you just hit the key when, once the cursor's in there, and you'll have it. So hit apply, hit close, and then as you'll see, I can hit spacebar on my keyboard to do that, or I can now hit it on my MIDI keyboard. Woohoo! So now that that's set up, we're gonna check out these other controls because these ones do rely on specific notes on the keyboard to be pressed in order for them to work. Mark was when I added and removed time markers. So just like so, adding and removing time markers. And that needs to be at F sharp three in the complete control software. And that's because complete control transposes negative two so like when I actually put this in as F sharp three, it's actually playing an F sharp five in Fruity Loop Studio. And that's important because the the keyboard key is actually F sharp five that you need to do that. I mean, it's just, that's like how the song marker controls work. So um, same deal with the other page as far as the other settings go. Um, and I'll just kind of cycle through these and show you the settings. This was moving. Um, one bar at a time to the previous bar, one bar at a time forward. Deselecting anything that was selected. So if you um, selected like a marker region, then you deselect it, and then jumping from marker region. So uh, deselect is A sharp two. Previous uh, marker region selection is going to be F sharp two. So select the next marker region is going to be G sharp two. Jump to the previous uh, marker section is going to be C sharp two, and then jump to the next marker region is going to be D sharp two. So, some other cool things you can set up is like a save button that just triggers like a Control S in your project, so you don't have to go to your keyboard to hit you know Control S. Sorry, I apologize. My cat is playing with a plastic bag. So uh, that that's great. I'm, I'm also setting up, uh, we're going to be setting up like a metronome control, like basically just setting up the DAW to work with these buttons um, and different pages of buttons to give me a lot more control without having to jump back to my um, computer. So that's the goal. And if this uh, video helps you get to that goal, give it a like, subscribe, and um, I'll see you next time.